Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and I've been doing a lot of rendering recently for the upcoming series, Basic Rendering 2. Because in the previous two videos, we talked about having an isolated line layer, which we could work with independent of the tone. But here, as you can see, my document only has one layer. And this is just a different way to get to a similar result. Neither one's the correct way, they're just sort of different approaches. But in this case, we're going to use the paintbrush, the eyedropper, and the smudge tool. But the goal is the same. I don't want lines, I just want to have a painting. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. So it's all about edge control, but I'm going to be working pretty fast and pretty flat. So I might make a new layer, switch to the smudge tool here. And this is a great way to add softness into a transition. I find the smudge tool is a little harder to control for me, but it's a great way to blend tones. So here you can see I'm pretty immediately losing that line and I'm getting a tonal transition. I'm getting an edge and that's the goal. So especially for these sort of border regions, a very soft transition is nice. Now, if I came in here where I might want a harder transition, like on this eye socket, the soft smudge brush look might not be exactly what I'm going for. So it might be a good first start. So here I'm getting rid of the lines, as you can see, but it might just be a little too soft. So if I decide it is too soft, then I might make a new layer, switch to the brush tool, and then manually paint back in some hardness. And so this would be on-screen blending. So I'm using the Alt key, temp layers, just like the basics that I've taught in so many videos on the site. But if you want to then transition that new paint softly back into the image, another way to do it would be to switch back to the smudge tool. And in doing so, you get a pretty quick and efficient way to get those soft edges. So you could proceed through the rest of the painting in this exact same way. Soft might be best achieved by the smudge tool. When I had a little hardness back in, you'd make a new layer and paint that with the brush tool. So in a way, you could think of these few tools in the way that a traditional painter would just use a brush. They might use the edge of the brush, or they might use more or less thinner or medium but they're all just using one tool kind of in different ways. Well, if you have good keyboard shortcuts and good muscle memory, you can switch between the brush tool, the smudge tool, and the eraser tool pretty quickly. And in a sense, they all become extensions of one idea. So it's not like you're picking different menu items or really changing your focus. You're just switching between a few simple commands. So if you think, well, soft, that means I probably want to use the smudge tool. So I'd be soft a little while, and then when it came time to do something hard, well, then I would switch to the brush tool, do a little painting manually with the brush tool, sample with alt, and then if I wanted something soft again, I might decide to switch back to the smudge tool. Now, of course, if you were to ask 10 different digital painters how they work, they're each gonna give you a different answer. There is no correct way to do digital painting. The previous two videos described a very different, very technical approach in which you have a lot tighter control. If you wanted to, say, add color to the line art, you could do that with the old method because they were on separate layers. In this method, you don't have that control because here I'm essentially working flat the entire time. But this has its own upsides because it's a more simple document I can work with a little more sort of fluidity this way, and it just feels less technical. So if you're the kind of person that maybe came from traditional painting, this just might connect with you more. But the point is, it's worth trying all of these techniques because you just don't know which one is going to work best for you. But all of the techniques really rely on your knowledge because this is just a mechanical act, getting rid of lines. But this ultimately allows me to do rendering which comes from understanding. So if you really want to improve your rendering, series like basic rendering one and two are a way to understand what's happening and why you're painting the way you are. 
And especially with the new series, understanding how to do this from your imagination is a little bit more tricky than just painting from reference. But no matter what you do, practicing rendering is a great idea. So have fun with it. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.